switches over to Widow, both of them we can safely assume will probably be outclassed by Sparker. Well, thanks for bearing with us with what will hopefully be the last technical delay we have for the rest of the evening. But nice to get it out early before the action really starts. <laughs> Point hasn't even unlocked yet. You've got Moose on the high ground on his Roadhog. It's what he is known for. And the wall coming up nice and early. So that's not on cooldown. Trying to go for the hook, won't find it. But they have given away positional control to Clockwork Vendetta. They're playing this quad tank setup on British Hurricane, but already the hook comes through. Trying to deny Dan Ed, and there's an overload for Engineer. He's already been found out by Happy Cool. And they just peeled back behind the shelter that was set up by Mini Me. And soon is sitting there at nearly 100 energy. It's going to be really hard to deflect the damage that's coming out from this man. And he's burning through. Numlock will have to be a casualty to this conquest. It's looking like Clockwork Vendetta have lost that positional control they carved out for themselves. And first cap should be going over to Hurricane. It should be, but they're continuing the fight. And this is something that the Clockwork Comp does very well. Oh, it's just a huge dead. sustain. Oh, there you go. He's died, finally. He's on like 1% HP. That was incredible, the fact that... It took so long for anyone to take the win away from that. I do actually like what British Hurricane are doing here with Ganad on the hamster because he gets in and he forces a lot of those cooldowns out, like the hook. You can't just get a, let him get in that free pile driver through. But once that resource goes away, British Hurricane are quite safe to just move on in. Now they're going to have to worry about that nano boost coming in. Who to get that over to? You could just pop it straight on to Moose, potentially mini me, and just rattle that damage off. Might be used as a life saving method. We're not really quite sure how they want to be approaching this one, especially against the quad tank composition. Now the healing is going to be shut down there from the bio grenade. Moose has already committed the whole hog to force them back. I believe they're going to be throwing that Graviton Surge now. Now, Moose can't escape like a teammate can. Huge anti nade on top of it. They will put a Blizzard to deflect the attack. Moose and Mini Me were so close to dying, but they will be healed out after that expires. And there's that Nano Boost killing Happy Cool. The boy can remake. And now Moose is still going to abuse that damage. He presses on against Suna. Danny goes in with the ball, but he's actually found out by the turret. Now the pressure turns over to Numlock, but Suna from the side will keep his tank alive. The healing has been boosted for the rest of Clockwork Vendetta, and they got the advantage of bodies on the point. They need to take out Yoke to seal the deal and get the flip just after two thirds progress taken. But it costs them a, a lot of ultimates here. Um, but now they have Engineer's Molten Core. And one thing that the Clockwork Vendetta comp does very well, especially if British Hurricanes comp here with it, like tends to stick together, mm -hmm. is that when the Molten Core comes through, it makes you, it forces you to split up right, and in that moment, target focus can shut down, can be lost. So really, in this moment, British Hurricane, they have to stay disciplined during this fight. The target focus has to be excellent. They're getting close to that Graviton Surge for Suna online. There's the multi core already going to like lay down the carpet, the welcome map for British Hurricane is to go onto the point. And tanking a lot of damage, the beat comes out early to make sure they're not sacrificing too much. And they will walk onto the point and try and take the territory away. Moose from the side, going to lock down Suna in place. And here comes the whole hog, the sweeper. Nice sleep coming in from Bucket to shut that one down. But the damage has already been done. They've lost one member. They've boosted up all the healing. Nano boost being committed. Numbok is incredibly low. And Minimi will finish him off. Oh. The Wrecking Ball comes in. Damn it, finds two. His engineer and Sky Ripper will go for a nice little travel. He's got Mr. Zytor in his sights. The power driver was there <laughs> as Happy Cool will turn it around onto Moose, who denied that healing. They'll show the flip. From Bok. And yeah, look, like you said, blank flip coming in over onto that one. 80% there. And now it's final fight territory. Clockwork and Vendetta are going to have one more attempt, and it's not even going to be one that's coordinated. <laughs> Dana pretty much saved British Hurricane from that. was going terribly for them. As soon as Suna gets out of the way, you lose so much damage. But a free couple of kills with the grappling claw, you'll take it. Using that third person peek, he spots out Engineer and will pivot around. The turret's not going to get much value out there. Actually, the sightline is enough to capture someone out. Sykes has already found Yofi and Moose has gone down as well. Overtime in effect for British Hurricane as Danon will be frozen up. Skyrim gets some kills. There's no one to block out that huge shadow from Numlock. But there's also no one to block out the Sleep Dart as well. As the Molten Core will be laid down, they've got a Supercharger to play with. Does Numlock have to stay off the point? Bodies on the point going over to Clockwork Vendetta and they're keeping Hurricane at bay. They're going to get a flip out here. Oh, come on. Sleep into the damage is unreal. And Engineer, he wants to go for the ambitious hammer kill, but he's not going to find it today because Sky Ripper's already fragging out. Oh, Vendetta, they flanked so much there, but British Hurricane, I understood what was going on through their heads. They knew that the big win condition there was Ricky's Blizzard, so they focus him, they shatter him, they get him to the floor, and they take him out of the picture. But you know what? At that moment, Engineer's already made the big swoop around back, behind the back, and then just ruins the entry of Retreat with a Molten Core that he's accrued from just the free damage he gets from the back. Ricky's looking for the 
pixel angles here to get these right clicks off and give a lot of spam damage over to Hurricane as they're moving into this point. And he will have a blizzard to really shut down what Hurricane is trying to do. Throws it straight into the wall and it will clear it off until Hafikul goes ahead with the consumption. He read that one like a book and that huge ultimate for Clockwork, now non-existent. They're looking towards Engineer to get the Molten Core online, but Happy's already found Mini-Me. Engineer will find a kill on the down. It's deploying the Molten Core. It's Moose with that Nano Boost, trying to fight against the Nano Boosted Numlock, who's getting close to that Shatter. They need some life support. Bucket died nice and early in that fight, and he needs to run back in to try and heal up the rest of his team. Clockwork and Vendetta have basically just won this out right now. I don't think there's an answer for Hurricane. They're switching over to Mobile Heroes to try and contest this first round. This is pretty much map one done. Clockwork Vendetta taking it away. I think a lot of that comes down to Engineer. The Molten Cores were perfect from this man. Entire time, coming out from the back lines, and the fact that he's able to charge one consistently per fight, mm -hmm. that's an incredible amount of damage he's outputting as well, just using the E. And that's what Clockwork Manetta's comp does as well too, is that Engineer, he's got the E, which gives him more sustain. Moose has got the Take a Breather that gives him more sustain. Ricky has more sustain. It's so hard to remove them, even when they are in these 1v3 situations, because they have moments of like invincibility where you go like, well, we have to change target focus now in that moment. British Hurricane, I think they need to go something like free DPS. At the moment, they're just getting outmaneuvered. They're going in with double DPS, going for the two snipers on this map, and they will pivot it around. Yofi going over to the Mercy, and I'd like to see Skyripper taking that role as well. I was concerned that maybe the 30 HPS from an Orb of Harmony, not enough to sustain five members of the team, because Zytol is on that Hanzo. It is interesting that Zytol's on the Hanzo currently. So I really like the Clockwork Vendetta, how I have so many like quick switches up. Monk Marder sometimes goes over to the Widowmaker. He's not in right now, but instead it's Zytol taking up the DPS role. British Hurricane... They're going to be trying to take control of the pillars here, make sure they can get the point. They want to stay clear of those halts for as long as possible. Zytor's already found Dannon, and no one's paying attention to Moose. We'll miss out on that hook, so the element of surprise now non-existent for this big clockwork vendetta flank, and if you get point control over, Yofi will bring Dannon back. Engine has already found Numlocks, and now there's no res on the side of Hurricane, so Numlocks taking the long walk back, and they're going to let this point go over. That is until Sooner starts getting the return onto Zytor. This Moose flank still not finding the hook, which is uncharacteristic of this guy. But they're doing what they have intended to do this whole time, and that's pressure, pressure, pressure. Those British Hurricane are struggling to find those good sight lines just because so many flanks going on. He's denying the regroup. <laughs> He's going for the 1v1 against Numlock and just camping him out and denying his team. Do you know what? That's so much pressure applied to Hurricane that they have to fall back and try and help him. You either go and deal with Moose or try and get your teammate back into the Fight, otherwise you're in perpetual 5v5s, 5v6s when the rotation comes back round. It's already feeling like British Hurricane are falling apart just here in round two. They've had much less of a... Oh, half of you done as well. Much less of a contestation on the point so far. Just because... And, and that's from round one. Round one, it looked lo a lot more competitive. Pot of Dero just taking full control of this point. They're going to send that Dragon Strike through and remove the entrenched Clockwork from Dero from that forward position. And then it will find Moose, and now Numlock is allowed to play Overwatch again. Puts that Supercharger nope. <laughs> down. And they're going to be putting the Molten Core, laying down that kind of welcome mat yet again for them. They're looking for the flank, though. Bockett's already dropped down there. Behind them, I think he was mispositioned in there, maybe with a halt to put him down. Happy Call's coming from the side. Engineer taking a lot of damage. Bockett will be brought back. Zyta just lines up an easy shot on Sunu. He needs some peripheral vision on this one. Hurricane have done enough to go ahead and Is win the enough? fight. Yo, Fee comes in. He's like, hey, you leave my Widowmaker alone. I'm going to deal with you myself. That flip has to come in here. That is until Moose gets rid of Numlocked. And again... Clockwork Vendetta taking control. Ricky finds a third as well. That should have been the retake for Hurricane. And they got 10% left to play with. Clockwork Vendetta, they might have just taken the first map away in a quite dominant fashion. It feels like British Hurricane haven't even put up a single bit of a fight. Is this it? Is this Dan it? He just let Danny go through. He knew he ran out of time. No one was in position there. Round one, very close between the two teams. But when it came out to Sanctum, Clockwork Vendetta just running away with it. And this is something that we were talking about before, traders, that if control goes over to Clockwork Vendetta, this game is going to run away from British Hurricane. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's going to be a little bit of difficulty to maintain this form. Like, we're going to be moving over to map number two. But the problem we're having is that 
we just have a dominant clockwork vendetta. And it was so difficult for Hurricane to deal with. I mean, yeah, you eventually got rid of Moose, but after you saw Moose go in with a hook, you have to kind of pay him a little bit of attention, right? You do, yeah. And we saw a couple of failed attempts to try and capitalize on that for Hurricane, and he just wasn't able to find it. But he didn't move from the position. And then all of a sudden, you're dealing with Numlock coming down. He then goes for the spawn cap, and it delays Numlock coming in. You're also using that huge main tank shield for your team, and you have to be mindful about that. You've got double snipe you're playing against. Like, what are you cowering behind at that point? Yeah, and even more than that, something I really liked and what I saw was the engineer is able to just deny all of these routes of ingress. Mm -hmm. We saw the horseshoe. He'd already popped down a. Uh, he'd already popped down the the molten core, so they couldn't even drop down the side. Uh, and then it was on the bridge as well. It's just like, where did British Hurricane go? It felt like Hotwood Vendetta just had their number the entire time. Well, we're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, we're going to bring you map number two, and we're looking for Hurricane to clap back. Everyone, welcome back to Overwatch Contenders. Map number two coming on your screens real quick. We're heading over to Volskaya Industries. And blank, things aren't going to plan for British Hurricane. It feels like they kind of lost the wind in their sails when it came round to uh, Sanctum. And mainly, they just didn't have any kind of presence on that point. It's not going well, let's be honest. Um, now, one thing I was told by the court of another team mm -hmm. was that uh, if they won map one, we might see something a little bit special coming up. So hopefully Volskaya, it, it holds some, some new fruits for us from the Court of Vendetta. Uh, they do really have only one comp at times with a few variations, but we won't even yeah. see a new variation, a new starter. It, it could be good, but I think they're, I mean, they they're disappoint, strong. They disappoint a lot of their fans that they did. They, they would, yeah. They would. A lot of fans have been I, raising the I, question marks. I've, going. Been told, I've been told there'd be something special, so I'm expecting something special. Well, British Hurricane, 
they might actually put in a uh, substitution into this one. We typically see that they flex onto this DPS option when it comes round two maps like Volskaya Industries. We may see Sparker coming into the roster to be able to play a more proficient DPS hero because as we know, the relationship between Suna and Sparker is Suna, he's the Zara specialist, and we have Sparker, who is the DPS specialist. Both able to replace each other's roles, mm -hmm. but just not quite to the same standard. Yeah, I, I think at this point, if you're a British Hurricane, you're looking to play this free DPS. You mm -hmm. know that the Clock of the Comp doesn't too, do too well with a high amount of spam, so... You will see Sparker now in the roster. It makes sense to me to pull him in. Uh, but Bocket felt like he died quite a few times just to random things during the last map, like it was the Molten Core, where he seemed relatively safe after the Transcendence, but died anyway. Yeah, it's... Uh He's dying. I think the biggest concern is he's going down earlier in the fight. Early. Early. Very and, early. You know, he's often being put onto this Arna, which is so pivotal with keeping his team up, especially when, uh, you know, Yofi's not going on to that uh, main main healer. He's uh, relying on Bocket to be able to do that for him. And if he goes down early, you're just missing so much of your potential. And you know, yes, the Biotic Grenade is going to be a big shutdown tool, especially for characters like Moose, who are going to run around with that Take a Breather. Quite a minute, there's such a, a tilt team, right, okay? Because okay. Zytor just kills himself for fire. No, I'm not saying that this is 100% true, but British Hurricane might be in the head like, is Zytor going on to fire? He played DPS last last map. True, I I, I think if you're you're getting like... You're getting cut, in the heads. You're, you're getting in the heads, but I think you're putting the carriage in front of the horse right there. Maybe thinking a little bit too many Maybe. steps down the line. Uh, a lot of teams will kill themselves in the swan room just to mess with them. We see entire team wipes come off the environmental kills. But it's British Hurricane triple on the DPS. offense first, and like you pointed out, Blank, this is what we want to see on map number one, the triple DPS. So they are all on top of the hook currently, and you see how fast the shield immediately goes down, and the Maywall now has to be used for protection rather than for offensive capability. And that is what you want to do with Clock Vendetta. You want to put them on the back foot so you can set up Sparker in a great position to hit these headshots. Sparks going to go for the grab hook off to the side. Did find the angle on Ricky, just couldn't connect the shot. He's going to use that ice block to deny the damage. The shield already been burnt through for Mini-Me, so they're just buying their time until they can get him back. Moose already found Hathcool with the hook. Violet Grenade looking to boost that healing. Of course, they are going to have both the honor and the mercy here, so it's going to be really hard to break through this clockwork comp with the amount of sustain they have available to them. That HP. being said, Moose getting so close. He's really testing out that healing right now. The last map as well, he, I think he was like 15 HP to a Dragon Strike. He either is getting very lucky or, or is very precise in his movements. Preemptive hook coming out from Moose. He assumed someone would be on the end of that hole, and the wall's being used to deny that combination, potentially, for the side of British Hurricane. At least deny some of the damage from the hole, exposing the team of Clockwork Vendetta. Zyto is now sitting on that nano boost, and we got a Valkyrie as well. They're going to pump in the damage to Moose. He's on this high ground. He's trying to find Bocket on the back line. Forces out the Transcendence nice and early. The nano boost being used is big. They've already found two, so Hathcool's not able to get into that healing. Spark is in the sky, and Zyto will be the one to take him out. His second kill of the game, and now numlot has got no choice right now. He's not got the Fortify. The wall goes up to deny it, but they've come straight back down for the right click of Ricky to pick it up. Two minutes 20 left on the clock for Hurricane, and they're starting to get ults on the board. Half your time bank gone already and Bucket is playing so scared at the moment versus this team literally just nano moose and Bucket's like whoa I want to have nothing to do with this immediately pops a transcendence and now you're lacking an ultimate is going to save you versus the blizzard versus the molten core so British Hurricane they have a lot less defensive capability but they have a lot of offensive capability can they use the TPS ultimates efficiently well, there's that supercharger as well as the dragon strike passing through the team and engineers already been found out he will go down so close to that damage ultimate of the molten core the blizzard will be committed to this fight but that's a mistake you should hold on to that one because it's already over Hurricane have already wiped out your entire team and they're going to be taking away point A point B might be quite good for British Hurricane here it's the greatest point for Clockwork and Vendetta because they can set up their close spawns, which means they can start the, comp the, the basically the point for a long, long time. But Happy Cool, with this barrage, can immediately take down a lot of members and just cut off half of the team and be spawning at the same time. And hopefully they can clean up during that. Danad is playing a very dangerous game with Moose at the moment. They did dance around the hook, so it's not the worst thing in the world. And this team is now pushing forward. It stops them from getting further up. Sparks already found Mini-Me. They're going to throw out the Molten Core and the Wall to stop any further aggression and buy some time for their main tank to get back into the fight because he will be coming back with that Supercharger. 
Moose. That's going to be a Nana Boost thrown over. Here's the Barrage coming in. Box has already found Moose. We'll trade back onto Nunlock. They're sitting in the Transcendence from Bark. They've won have that. this fight now. They've won the fight. You'd say that, but not decisively enough, Blank, I don't think, because the spawn's right there for Clockwork Vendetta. So while they are moving on to the point and dealing that damage, they will bring Nunlock back. They've allowed Clockwork to set back up after burning all of their ultimates. And Engineer's moving straight in for the kill on the Happy. Thankfully, the splash damage will find him as he pops around the corner. But this is what we want to see from the triple DPS uh, composition. Lots of different crossfire coming in for Hurricane from multiple angles. That is until they find free kills and just shut it all down. It doesn't matter what crossfire you have, you're playing with half of a team. Yeah. I, I, what I meant was that they wanted the fight. Because yes. the Zenyatta used a trance uh, after you saw Numlock go down to ensure the res goes through safely. But Clockwork Vendetta, I like what they're doing with the Ana and the Zen here. They uh, obviously don't need to move too much because point B is very enclosed. And with Sky Ripper on the Zen, Zytor on the Ana, they're providing a huge amount of DPS. And it's giving them a lot of ability to keep Happy Cool controlled in the air, which is why you're now going to see them make the switch over to the Roadhog, Bucket over to the May. We haven't seen too much of Bucket's May before. So uh, we have to wait and see how good he actually is on this hero. We'll go ahead and try and pull some kind of combination off, and they land it successfully for Bocky to pick up that first kill, the whole hook combo. Apparently a resounding success for British Hurricane as they walk forward. Now Rick is going to put that wall up and try and get Hurricane to go into the path he wants. Oh, he cancels out the ultimate with the hook! Insane. We'll shut down that blizzard coming out from Clockwork Vendetta. But we'll still have the Nano Boost to work with. Multicore's about to come online. The whole hog's been popped early, and Happy Cool won't find the hook or the CC to shut it down. Damage boost coming in, as well, of course, as that nano boost. Make sure that he's pumping out the less damage he can. Mini hooked hook. in. No main tank on the side of Clockwork Vendetta. They have to play around walls and terrain, as Happy Cool is keeping Moose at bay right now and potentially going on a hunt. He plays around the side, gets the hook, brings him in straight for his own death. They pop up their own wall to deny it, and I'm not sure about Skaripa going on to the point with the Transcendence that early when none of his team were prepared to fight. But he goes in and contests it, buys some more time. The wall coming up as well. Minimi doesn't have the protective barrier to hide behind. He is getting healing from his team, but not enough to keep him on that point. So the progress keeps ticking up in favor of Hurricane. Moose. They've moved on to the point here. Moose on the Doomfist coming in against Happy Call, who's now playing around the Supercharger, but can't get into cover because Spark has given these three sightlines on the Widowmaker. And that's going to be round one completed for British Hurricane. That entire time, British Hurricane wants to get into this position that we currently just saw them in there, which is on the point where they can start to control the spawns, mm -hmm. control the angles at which Clockwork and Dead can play. But they were cycling out the whole hog from Moose and the Holtz coming out from Minimi so very well on Clockwork Vendetta that they were basically pushing British Hurricane back even when they were losing the fights, meaning that taking space for Hurricane was so, so difficult. Extending the fight out much, much longer. Still 2 minutes 29 for two points there is not too bad. Will allow them two fights on point A, but as we saw last time, it took them about two minutes just for the first fight. They had to have the full four minutes just to take it. And you got to remember as well, with this clockwork comp they lean on, offense on a capture point isn't really their strong suit. No. They uh, much prefer to dig themselves in and play and pivot around a single location. So Hurricane are fairly safe now. Yeah. As long as they can make a pretty good hold here on point A. Um, I think that the major worry for you of British Hurricane is how long you get hold on, held on point B, but I think they, they had a lot of patience there and from round two on the last map in Nepal, it feels like they are playing much more composed. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is something that I do see with Hurricane quite a bit, is that after a map goes poorly, the performance dips a little bit. It hasn't happened here, so it feels like some of the some of the coaching is coming through, a little bit more patience, a little bit more discipline overall from this team. Where's that barrier going? Just launches it straight up in the sky, it will land somewhere. So they now press forward. Clockwork Vendetta on the offensive and looking for them to try and take away space from Hurricane, and deny them the angles. And we still got the double snipers coming in here. You can see Dano playing up on the hut. They got Sparker with the bulk of the team sitting there behind that barrier. They will take out that turret from Engineer nice and early. They're using the wall to deny the information. There's the Hulk combo. Won't find the hook and won't find the shot. But he will be able to a little bit more pressure to CV. Moose is very ambitious, very scary. Using the Holt hook against them as he gets halted up, he's halting them, he's hooking them back. So already a lot of space gained and Ricky taking down Dana is huge. And now Moose is gonna walk in to Mega, head upstairs and get Happy Cool off this high ground. 
trying to apply some pressure to him, maybe not even committing to that one. Might just go back down to the point. Going for the hooks, looking at the angles. Doesn't want to get caught out here. Now he sees Happy Call going in. We'll hook him in first. Pops take the breather nice and early, and we'll start returning damage. And Happy Call does the exact same thing. While this is going on, by the way, the point is just being captured by Hurricane. As until Numlock presses forward, but he's not touching the point. He's halted in. Sparks is in a position as well. They have to jump on the point. But he's just being healed up. But there's the dragon strike from Zyta. Gets it off before he goes down to Dana. The red's nice coming rest. in. Beautiful turnaround from British Hurricane at 94%. They really take control of the point and stop the point A capture. That was a very difficult restabilize from British Hurricane. They must have felt the pressure there in that last moment. Props to Hafi Cool keeping Moose under control, understanding that that is one of the biggest things that happened at the moment is that Moose's flanks were going unchecked. Now Hafi Cool is on the Roadhog, he's just dealing with them. And in that moment, it's fine for British Hurricane because they can rely on Dan Ed and Sparker, who are these two great DPS players, to basically put in the chunk of the DPS, but they can't allow him to get so much free space again. Sparker needs to start hitting some of these shots. The wall goes up and it buys time for Clockwork to heal up Minimi. You took a little bit of damage walking in, as you'd expect. You've got no Diva on the team to eat up a lot of the spam coming in. And Minimi again going down solo. Dragon Strike goes burning through members of Clockwork Vendetta. Enough for Bocket to find that first pick. Damage with the follow-up. If you're CV, you just lose all the progress you've just made and look to retreat back. Instead, Minimi gonna double down by putting that shield on top of the turret. And yet again, he's put on life support because of it. This might be risky, but Danit finds the first kill. Great job. Moose now take a breather. Minimi, he's in a precarious situation. Everybody knows that Arissa does not walk too quickly. Goes down to half HP. Now British Hurricane, they've got two defensive ultimates online. Alongside with that supercharger, Sparky takes down Zaito, so it's an extra 10 seconds added to the clock. But Clockwork Vendetta, five ultimates here. This is going to be their big fight. If they can't make it now, it's going to be all Desperation Station. Oh, That's a big one. He does not get it, though. With the he he blank, he's coming in there. Trying to get the hook down, and now he's going to walk up. The whole intention at this point is for Moose to walk up here and try and get the whole hog off. But Danny says no. You didn't kill Bocket. You weren't able to get away with it. And now Happy Call is going to move over. Take the duel with Zaito. Should be able to finish him off with just one melee. You have 50 seconds remaining. The only thing committed there was that Valkyrie from Sky Rippers. You still have ults to play with, and you've got 45 seconds on the clock. The Valkyrie does remove a lot of healing from Clockwork of Vendetta, though, in this next push, because that's what they're relying on for healing there. Other than the self-sustain on the rest of the heroes, now you don't have 50 HPS being applied to everyone, which makes basically making the distance to the point much, much harder. British Hurricane can really push on the spam as Vendetta walking in. They might have to wait for a little bit longer. 20 seconds remaining. Molten Core just goes straight up. It will force them back further. Go to turn the Dragon Strike. The Ice Block comes out nice. No, Sky Ripper's already That's gone big. down, though. No rest. That's your only heal coming out as British Hurricane will now just dismantle this fight. They're being launched back by the whole hog, but it's so far away. It's not dealing damage, and you know who thrives in that long-range environment? It's Sparker. He finds two and seals the deal. Clockwork Vendetta going to go down here, and Hurricane going to tie the series at the half. So it's exactly like you said, Trid. They are going to struggle yeah. when it comes to the attack. I think British Hurricane played that much, much better there. It could have gone a very different way, though, if Bucket did go down to that halt on a hook. So I'm kind of unsure to the, just the hook combo. So I'm unsure why he didn't die. It might have been that Moose just didn't hit that headshot, which is very uncharacteristic of the lad. The guy is very good on Roadhog usually. But I like what Haffy Cool's doing. I'm enjoying that he's keeping Moose in check and Sparker and Dan are coming alive on the high ground. And I think one of the major things is now is that they're not getting too aggressive unless they've got three or four picks. Before they were getting aggressive when they had one or two, but now they know that, look, right, everyone on this team is super dangerous. We have to take a lot of care and just be really patient on this high ground. We are speedrunning this series a bit as well. That was we incredibly are, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fairly quick half, a 2-0 in favor of Clockwork Vendetta. And then we didn't really see point A get off the board for uh, Clockwork again. And when it came down to Volskaya, but you know, very close though. They ended up with 94.7%. That was all on the back of an impressive retake from Hurricane in order to get back in. And I want to go back to that moose flank we saw coming because you could see what the intention was there. You could walk in around the side. Intentionally, you get the nice little hook off. You pull in the pocket. You kill him. You remove a transcendence. And Zen, being an incredibly slow-moving target, will take a while to get back to the point. And it gives you that innate advantage. Alternatively, though, he just walks up. No one pays attention to him. He pops the whole hog. Bang. High ground advantage. Gone. And in the chaos, where Clockwork Vendetta truly thrives, they should have been able to come away with the point capture. 
And exactly, it's that chaos which is really helping Hot Rod Vendetta take a lot of these points. And this is again why I'm liking what Hatticle is doing so well. Not because it's keeping Moose so much in check, but because it's also keeping his own DPS in check. Before, we saw a lot of times Suna and Daned on map one were getting a little bit flustered, making a few more mistakes than we normally would see them do going down early in fights. But now that Sparker and Daned here didn't have to worry about that Roadhog walking up behind them, just, just basically crouching up to them and then hooking them from behind, now they can fully focus on making sure that spam goes through, making sure that they're doing enough damage to keep Mini-Me from basically taking too much space with the shield placement. So I'm really happy with what I'm seeing. And what British Hurricane are doing here is that they're setting themselves up for success. Let's see if they can do that when we go to our map three. We'll go to that right after the break.